<clears throat> oh, hi, everybody. Meteorologist Joe Chaffee. Welcome to tonight's Joe Chaffee Weather Show. As we have, uh, I mean, just absolutely groundbreaking news to tell you about. It's, um, it's July, and it's going to be hot, and it's going to be humid, and we're going to have thunderstorms. And you'll probably see the hysterics uh, being driven over the next uh, four or five or six days about all of this. But uh, it is July. And from the standpoint of heat waves, as our, uh, the chairman, Scott Briller, as I like to call him, uh, has uh, you know, pointed out with some statistics, uh, this is going to really kind of pale by comparison. Uh, as far as consecutive days of 90 degrees plus, which uh, in New York City uh, could run uh, up to at least an even dozen when you look back at the record books, and, and in areas nearby to the south, perhaps extending uh, for longer periods. And we've also had summers where uh, we've had a lot of days where temperatures have gone up above the 90 degree mark when you look at the whole, the season as a whole. So, uh, uh, you know, want to just kind of maintain a little bit of perspective here. Also, from the and I'm I'm waiting. I am waiting for this to happen. Uh, if it uh, hits 100 on Saturday, uh, which I believe will be the first time since 2012 uh, in New York City, or you know, probably we'll do it in Philadelphia. I think it'll do it in Newark. But if it does it in New York City, it always gains a little extra attention. I'm sure that we are going to have the, um, the chorus out there uh, regarding uh, the reasons, the nefarious reasons behind this. And, uh, well, look, uh, you have to go back to 1993 in New York City where you can find uh, in mid-July three consecutive days of 100 plus uh, degree highs. So uh, one single day <clears throat> is nothing. And that 100 degree reading, by the way, <clears throat> is um, kind of a tough nut to crack, uh, at least as far as New York City is concerned. Uh, and even in, air, in, in places like Philadelphia, and as you, uh, certainly as you go further north up uh, toward uh, it, into New England, uh, 100 degree readings just don't happen very often. So uh, you get a, you, 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 they happen and then you don't see them around for uh, uh, many years at a time and then it, suddenly they happen again. So look, I just want to just kind of put it into perspective. It is going to be uh, a hot. I, I think we could probably say that uh, Saturday being the hottest day of the stretch will be brutally hot. Uh, it'll be brutally hu humid. Uh, this is going to take us uh, up through the mid-Atlantic states and, and on up into uh, much of central and southern New England. And it will include the coastal areas. Uh, find ways to stay cool. Front and center, though, is getting there. And we certainly got a taste of it. Uh, today uh, with uh, temperatures rising at or above 90 and also uh, with the humidity going up compared to yesterday. So it was noticeably uncomfortable, to, much more uncomfortable today. And it will be even more so tomorrow when those dew points push up uh, into the 70s. I think we're setting up for um, a fairly solid round of thunderstorms for later tomorrow and tomorrow night and they may be more toward the evening hours and beyond that where much of the day we don't see too much happening but uh, these uh, thunderstorms I think there's the potential for them to be strong uh, isolated severe storms uh, certainly possible and uh, I think we could also wind up with seeing uh, some uh, some uh, pretty hefty rainfalls coming out of some of these cells so that uh, there is the possibility of flash flooding. I think that's going to be the biggest risk. Not everybody's going to see that. See that. Uh, you're going to have to, you know, just kind of be in the target zone in the line of fire and get uh, get under some, any one of these storms. And w the um, weather models are going to take us in all different directions in terms of timing, in terms of who gets what and where. I, I've I've said from the onset that uh, that it's really it's just kind of best to recognize the risk area and then let the radars tell you to, on on Wednesday where uh, all that is uh, is going to happen uh, tonight on the uh, I just want to start off with with uh, the storm prediction centers risk area uh, for tonight because we do they did actually add uh, a marginal risk of severe weather from uh, south central Pennsylvania down into eastern North Carolina and covering eastern Virginia. There are some 
uh, some scattered thunderstorms in there that uh, are, some of them have gotten on the strong side uh, this evening. And there's an area that's moving across Pennsylvania that is weakening as it moves east, so they should fall apart. There's another stripe of marginal risk, and this is wrapped up inside uh, the remnants of Barry moving slowly through the Ohio Valley. And you can uh, see that running from northeast Louisiana all the way up into western Ohio. And then you have the uh, risk area that's out in the northern plains and back into the northern Rockies with a large area of slight risk and an area of enhanced risk being indicated into parts of South Dakota, northeastern Wyoming, southeastern Montana, three working severe thunderstorm watches as of 710 Eastern time. So if you are watching uh, from any of these areas or if severe weather is threatening your area, you, uh, you want to make sure you have the latest weather information. So Please recognize that uh, if, if you're watching this overnight, uh, this is all dated stuff. Uh, so you want to check the latest radars and latest uh, warnings, if any, by going to your local National Weather Service office page. And you can get to that by going to weather.gov. The um, U.S. satellite is uh, pretty interesting uh, with, uh, with the players. And you can see them in action. It's really important, I think, when you're looking at the scope of weather, it's uh, something that I uh, have made it a habit of doing, particularly now with the, the beauty of the goes. You really want to look at, at what's happening in terms of the actual weather and let the guidance kind of sort of essentially, quote, guide you to where you want to go as far as your forecast is concerned and not the other way around, okay? And when you take a look at what's happening on the satellite loop, <clears throat> a couple of things come to mind. First off, compared to yesterday, uh, look at the structure of what was Barry. It had a, if you remember from yesterday, there was a mo much more distinct swirl to it uh, on the satellite, that signature that shows up. Today, it seems to be <coughs> getting stretched out north, northeast, south, southwest. This is not unexpected. Uh, the uh, remnant uh, up or low it continues to weaken. And if you look to the north and west of that area through the western lakes, you can see clouds blowing off southwest to northeast. That's the upper trough and short wave in that northern part of the jet stream that's basically coming down. And it's kind of like an arm that, that's pushing southeastward. And it's going to take the remnants of Barry and both systems in tandem will be swinging to the east. And uh, this is going to play through for later Wednesday and Wednesday night. Dew points are going to be up into the 70s tomorrow. Temperatures are going to be climbing up into the low. And in some places, the middle 90s, you're going to have a, a, a fairly uh, ample shot of daytime heating uh, that will occur. So I think this is going to really uh, set off some of these heavier thunderstorms and with the tropical moisture in play and all the heating you're likely to see some uh, some of these storms produce uh, rainfall rates of two inches or more an hour so if you wind up seeing something like that getting under you for a little while you are going to get clobbered with heavy rain and the potential for some flash flooding also uh, you'll notice the um, near the coast there's not a whole lot going on, but in the, the area from eastern Pennsylvania on southward, those clouds are blowing up. That is essentially where the boundary zone uh, is, uh, we, uh, the real warm front, let's call it. Uh, and you're seeing thunderstorms forming right along that boundary zone this evening. They're going to fall apart when we move into the overnight. But again, we're in that process here where we are saturating uh, the upper atmosphere uh, in, in a big way and setting us up for the events for Wednesday uh, into Wednesday night. And by the way, this is all in, in part of the process of taking us to uh, the uh, really hot weather that is coming for the, uh, the uh, end of the week. So, uh, you know, it, it's a step-by-step -step affair. There are going to be areas, by the way, the, a lot of areas made it to 90 or better today. Uh, they will carry 90-degree highs beginning today and lasting right through next Monday. Uh, the one day where uh, some areas will not get to 90 is Thursday. Uh, if there's enough cloud cover and some uh, still some thunderstorms running around, we could see uh, areas kind of 
get into this, reach the 80s and then just come to a grinding halt. Uh, so that might be uh, the one day that could break the streak for a lot of folks, and they'll have to start over on Friday. Uh, just about everybody will get a four-day streak here. If you go Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday, some of you will get a six-day streak, which will be from today, uh, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, actually Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. I'm sorry, a seven-day streak. So Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Uh, for some folks, I think the further south you are, the better chance you have of seeing that seven day in a row uh, stretch. And we are going to have, of course, uh, Saturday, I think, is going to be the hottest day uh, for, uh, for just about everybody where we could see temperatures uh, top out near the century mark. Now, this is WPC's, the Weather Prediction Center, uh, is forecast, just like SBC does the severe weather, uh, they uh, do the uh, the precip, uh, precip amounts. And this is for excessive rainfall and the risk of flash flooding. And you can see that large area of slight risk. And, and I would treat this in kind of the same way that we treat the, um, uh, the SPC, uh, the, the Storm Prediction Center, severe weather. Slight risk doesn't literally mean very, very tiny. Uh, it uh, basically outlines that uh, you know, and there's a slight risk. There's there's a fair chance that you might get into a uh, a severe thunderstorm. Uh, it's a 15% probability uh, with the uh, with the slight risk. And uh, the uh, so so if those thunderstorms line up in just the wrong way, you're going to get clobbered with heavy rain. So they're outlining the general geographic area that that uh, that is possible. And you, they've actually pulled it further to the south now to cover almost all of New Jersey except the southeast where it's marginal. Slight risk across New York City, all of Pennsylvania, down to Maryland, West Virginia, Eastern Ohio, across much of the southern tier of New York State, uh, into the Hudson Valley, and on up into southern New England. And I, I think you're going to see if some of these thunderstorms really get going tomorrow, uh, you uh, will see... Some spots wind up putting down several inches and other spots getting a lot less. There's going to be variability, clearly. And as far as uh, severe weather is concerned, uh, from the standpoint of risks for hail and wind and, uh, well, possibly even some rotation, I, I don't think we could, can't rule that out, uh, there is a marginal risk. This was the forecast from earlier today. They haven't really changed it. Uh, they've kind of left it alone. Uh, with uh, the northern line running from the uh, Massachusetts, New Hampshire, Vermont state line to about Albany, and then arcing back into north central PA, swinging around uh, into northeastern Virginia, and then going east across the Delmarva Peninsula. So there's a marginal risk for severe weather for Wednesday in this zone. And uh, moving in toward the western Great Lakes and the northern plains, you have uh, an area of, of slight risk and marginal risk for uh, the daytime on Wednesday. Here's what the radar looks like this evening. I'll give it a refresh here. And uh, we have uh, some showers and storms that are, again, developing right near the boundary zone of the, let's call it the super tropical air. That is pushing eastward. I, I've been th hope, I've been forecasting that these cells are going to fall apart soon. Uh, but a, a chunk of that, that area is weakening. There are some cells in northeastern Pennsylvania moving into the Catskills, and now uh, it looks like some strong storms have moved across I-81 uh, I in New York State, uh, going east, uh, just past uh, Syracuse along I-90 there too as well. And the southern part of that area seems to be weakening a bit. And then there's another little cluster there in south-central PA that's moving eastward. And then if you look further south, you've got some strong cells developing down uh, in the uh, in the tidewater uh, and down into southeastern Virginia, eastern North Carolina, out to the west, uh, we uh, looking at the remnants of that Barry. They still have that kind of comma look to them. Uh, the bands of heavy uh, downpours and thunderstorms uh, lifting up very very slowly to the northeast, and there are certainly gaps in between here uh, with storms uh, into uh, Ohio, southeastern Michigan much of Indiana. These are mostly rain producers, uh, big rain producers, uh, rather than being uh, producing uh, strong winds. I haven't really seen much from the standpoint of, um, 
of warnings. I'll pull up the warning map, the state, the U.S. warning map. And then, of course, you've got some more active weather going on in parts of Minnesota and Iowa. And then in the other major risk area, we're seeing clusters of showers and thunderstorms throughout the northern plains and up and down the Rockies, while, of course, the west is nice and quiet up and down much of, of the west coast. Let's just put pull up weather.gov. Computer's a little bit slow tonight for whatever reason. And, uh, yeah, I mean, most of this is rain. There's still a small area where we have uh, flood watches remaining, northern Mississippi, southeastern, up to southeastern Missouri, and parts of western Tennessee. And you can see where you have the orange and the purple areas and the dark reds. Those are various excessive heat watches, heat warnings, and heat advisories that are up for the uh, areas from uh, coastal South Carolina all the way up into northern New Jersey, uh, but not too far west. It, it's kind of just covering uh, uh, inland of the coast by about 100, 150 miles. And then back through the middle Mississippi Valley, we've got uh, the big area of heat being indicated here. And the uh, salmon color, of course, those are the working, those three working severe thunderstorm watches that are up for parts of the northern plains and uh, into the northern Rockies. So, uh, first off, let's look at uh, where uh, we're going for tomorrow. I I'm going to kind of stay more focused east of the Rockies tonight. And uh, the the GFS model, obviously, when you look at the radar, I'm going to you can already see right now that there is a problem. So let me go back to that radar shot, and let's see. So take, let's take a look at that national radar loop and look here in the east where you've got all this activity going on from New York State down into eastern North Carolina. 40 minutes from now, the GFS has the radar looking like this. Uh, it's not quite as uh, bullish as you, so you see on the, um, on the current radar. So clearly the GFS is kind of underdoing this. We'll take a look at the, some of the other short range models in a moment. But uh, its view, uh, and one of the things the GFS was doing uh, up until very recently is that it was really rushing these thunderstorms in uh, during the mid and late afternoon, whereas the other short range models were kind of holding it back until later in the evening. And the GFS, the new GFS has kind of now moved to that idea where we see strong thunderstorms across Pennsylvania and upstate New York, but not very much going on along the coastal areas, and then it comes in between <clears throat> uh, 8 a.m. and 2 a 8 p.m. and 2 a.m. going into Thursday morning. Again, that is its view, uh, and, and we want to be a little bit careful here because each model, is, each model is going to have its own vision of how this is all going to play out. Now look at the NAM 3, which when you look at it, it really doesn't do very much with these showers and storms for uh, late tomorrow into tomorrow night. Uh, this is why I'm saying we need to let, let the radars tell us uh, tomorrow uh, what's going to be happening rather than relying on the, um, the huge variability that we're seeing with regards to these short-term weather models. Here's the HRRR, for example, uh, which has um, a bit more of a robust look. I have the... Uh, this should go out a bit further. This, only, this takes us to... Uh, uh, tomorrow evening at 10 p.m. and I mean here here too uh, it seems to wait until after sunset to bring showers and storms down to the coastal areas of New England and further south so uh, as I'm seeing it SPC's got those risk areas up there we've seen already a number of times where the um, models have really not handled very well the, uh, the dynamics that are in play. I, I kind of think that we have a pretty good setup here for some, some uh, hefty storms that will produce um, some, some uh, heavy rains late tomorrow afternoon into tomorrow night anywhere across uh, Pennsylvania into southern New England through parts of upstate New York and down into Maryland and Virginia and northern West Virginia. I, I, I feel pretty confident about that. And then on Thursday, uh, we'll have to wait because... Uh, the upper trough has to play through, so I think we could probably see some afternoon showers and storms. Uh, the uh, models are, you know, some models are showing more than others, but I think there will be some afternoon showers and thunderstorms that develop 
on Thursday and then we start the heat process for Friday and for Saturday so I, I want to uh, pull up uh, the the surface map here that's got the actual rainfall amounts as you can see the isobar is a bit better uh, on this and we'll uh, I'm gonna bring up on the paint box so give me one moment here I'm sorry I you know, I'm trying to make sure that the date and time are up there so you guys can see it on the GFS but we're looking at the surface map now for two o'clock in the afternoon on Saturday or you will be shortly well, you're seeing the map now, but I'm going to put it up on the paint box for you. Uh, hang on. And there we go. Okay, so what's happening on Saturday uh, that uh, makes it uh, likely that this will be the hottest day of the stretch is that you do have a frontal boundary that is going to be running from southeastern Canada uh, right across the lower lakes and then heading back uh, further to the west. So this basically bends the isobars here to a westerly component. And you can see it here. Uh, the isobars are just kind of lined up here. There's one and, and here's another and here's another. So you're going to have uh, winds that are going to be pretty much from the west or west northwest that is a heat wind it down slopes from the mountains to the west the heat uh, the air heats up it also tends to dry out as that occurs and it sends your temperatures soaring when i say dry out it's talking about the mid and uh, uh, the um, the mid levels and higher you're still going to wind up with dew points that are going to be up there in the upper 60s to low 70s with temperatures up uh, well up into the 90s to around 100 so as long as we have a fair amount of sunshine on Saturday and not a whole lot in the way of cloud cover uh, we're gonna see these temperatures really heat up and that there's not much to that front uh, it, it uh, weakens as it moves eastward Saturday night into Sunday morning and on Sunday will probably be a little bit lower than Saturday but still up into the 90s we're going to have to wait for the real push to come which is going to be on um, Monday and let me go back to the GFS here. Actually, uh, before we even do that, let me get, let's go keep it on the paint box. So here we go on Monday. This is what it looks like Monday afternoon at two o'clock when you have the, uh, the cold front that should break this, this heat. All right, wrong brush. Uh, you'll have the cold front that should break this heat moving through here. And behind it, right over here, this is a nice high that is coming down uh, into uh, Minnesota. There's dry air here. You're going to have a nice, decent push of dry air that's going to try and push eastward. So the key to the forecast will be that, that this front, as long as it keeps on moving, uh, we should be uh, in pretty good shape to make Monday the last really, let's call it, um, uncomfortable day and then get a break for a few days with drier air coming in uh, from the west. You see the initial push here that high is a little bit more to the south than it is to the east, but it does get in here uh, and uh, we do see uh, the, the push uh, moving down uh, into Virginia and North Carolina. Now there's one thing I want to just bring up uh, as far as uh, uh, next week is concerned. And I'm not forecasting this, but I think it's something we should pay attention to because of what just happened with the formation of Barry, you're going to have another front here that's dropping pretty far to the south if the models are to be believed. And it could uh, possibly, we could possibly have a setup where the southern part of that uh, frontal boundary, uh, the front itself just weakens and disappears and you're left with some energy in the southeast that drops into the Gulf of Mexico and you get some kind of low that develops out of this. Now the GFS doesn't seem to be doing much with that. The European actually kind of hinted at that, showed a hint of that uh, during this afternoon. So you know when you when you look whenever this time of year if you drive a frontal boundary far enough south off the Carolina coast and down uh, into Florida and into the Gulf of Mexico you have to watch for the possibility that a wave will develop and then gradually as the atmosphere warms because of the time of year that, that we're in and the very warm uh, temperatures, 
that something tropical could come out of there. I, I, I just want to put that, I'm just sort of putting that out on the table. I'm not saying that's going to happen, um, the, uh, but you know, you have to allow for the possibility with a frontal boundary hanging down like this. And, and you know how I like to say that the trend is your friend and you, you see these copycat um, situations where things just tend to repeat themselves in, 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 a, in similar fashion. Well, wouldn't be a huge shock if we wound up seeing something come out of this uh, down for later next week. Long-term speculation, we'll look at that again. We'll look at this again in the coming days and see if, if, uh, if anything comes of it. So uh, overall, uh, the, uh, I, I didn't see too much change with regards to the overall pattern going forward. It kind of looks like it did yesterday. Uh, we're still seeing troughing that wants to be uh, in the eastern part of the U.S. I'll just back it up here. Uh, but uh, the models all seem to be wanting to drive a, a, a trough pretty far to the south. You can see how it's kind of getting stretched out down uh, into the Gulf of Mexico, the southern end of that. Uh, and part of it lifts out. Then you get another shortwave trough that drops in uh, as we get toward the end of the month and possibly another one to follow. So uh, at least after we get through this heat and humidity that we're dealing with, uh, we uh, we'll, we may go back to a setup where we're getting fronts every couple of days, especially if we're going to wind up with a strong ridge building out there in the in the west in the Rockies, going up into western Canada, and leaving this trough uh, in the eastern part of the United States. I will also bring up the fact that the last days on this long range, by the way, is um, we're, we're now going to be in the month of August. Uh, It'll be interesting to see whether this tendency for troughing uh, in, in the east uh, is something that we carry through the month of August. Because if that's the case, then we're going to have to just kind of, you know, we're going to have to watch closely tropical systems as they develop. If there's going to be a trough in the east, uh, they may want to be more Atlantic bound as opposed to uh, Gulf of Mexico or Caribbean bound. Again, just an, just an observation about a general observation of the meteorology going on. I'm not forecasting, you know, an event to happen, but something to just kind of pay attention to if the upper pattern uh, remains uh, the way it has uh, has been. Now, uh, coming back to the heat for this weekend, let's see if these maps will behave themselves and load up for me. I don't know if you can see this all that well. You might not be able to, but I did have... Just want to show you uh, in terms of the high temperatures here. So let's go to Saturday because Saturday will be the hottest day. And this is where we're seeing numbers. These are Weather Service forecast prints in their digital forecast uh, database. So you're looking at 100 degrees numbers around Philadelphia and Trenton. You're looking at 99 around New York City, 96 in Boston. There's 100 up there in northeastern uh, Mass and also near Springfield, uh, Massachusetts, middle to upper 90s over a really large area uh, across New England, uh, on up uh, middle 90s even into Maine, uh, through upstate New York, uh, and back over uh, to I-81, uh, down uh, south into southeastern Pennsylvania, and of course down in the Washington, D.C. Uh, area and into Virginia, you're seeing numbers like 100, 100, 102. So this is really going to be your your the hottest day. And for those of you who like to make something bad uh, make uh, make it look even worse, uh, if uh, it'll load, we'll take a look at the uh, heat indices. And I'll just go back to two in the afternoon. The heat indices. So we combine the temperature and the dew point. Uh, to give you an idea of what it feels like and you're seeing a large area of heat indices running between 100 and 110 from uh, central and northern New England southeastward uh, all the way uh, south uh, into around the Washington look at some of these numbers these prints 109 105 in Washington 106 in Baltimore there's 107 there I believe that's Poughkeepsie in the Hudson Valley so uh, just to match it up to give you an idea what the dew point is going to be at uh, 2 o'clock in the afternoon on Saturday. You're looking at dew points that are running in the low and middle 70s uh, with uh, air temperatures that are going to be uh, running at, the, at that point of the day 
running in the middle to upper 90s. You're not going to be comfortable in this, okay? It is going to be, it's, good, it's every bit as miserable as, uh, as it looks. I know you're not liking this. I'm not liking this. I'm not a fan of, um, you know, heat and humidity. I can take it for a day or two, uh, and then after that, it's like, make it go away. And especially when you get into, start to get into later August and September, it can be really bothersome. Uh, to have a uh, you know day after day after day of, of 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 that sort of very warm but extremely humid conditions, much like we had for a good chunk of uh, of last uh, September, if you uh, if you recall. So let's uh, let me come back to the chat board and uh, join everybody. Oh, Steve Lapointe, thanks for hitting super chat tonight. Really appreciate that. Thank you so much. Um, nice to see you on board too. Uh, so. Cannot believe the NAO has been negative since April and not forecast to go positive anytime soon. Is that unusual? Uh, actually, not as unusual as you think. Uh, it is. Um, uh, let me just let me just punch up. Yesterday it was kind of. It wasn't so much that it was negative. It was just kind of uh, hovering the neutral line, uh, and, and that's that's what it what it sort of did today. Um, at least that's based on the zero Z run from last night. So it just kind of hovers right along the neutral line right through the next two weeks. The uh, Pacific North America index goes um, positive, uh, the uh, from strongly negative to positive uh, by uh, the time we get to next week, and then the Eastern East Pacific oscillation actually goes from uh, strong positive to negative, uh, which uh, the the switch over to negative is going to allow cold fronts to come through. The positive EPO right now with the with the neutral NAO is sort of giving us this, this view where the jet stream pulls far enough north so that we get into all this heat and humidity. But the change out in the changes out in the West and in the Pacific are going to drive the next cold front and then the next series of fronts as we uh, head into next week and beyond. At least that's what this, the, uh, the the teleconnections uh, would be telling you when when you look at it, it, it isn't that unusual. And a negative NAO in the summertime uh, is a um, you know something. Uh, actually, it winds up getting hot here in the east whenever the the NAO usually whenever the NAO is negative. So I think it's the EPO uh, that uh, is at least going to save us uh, after the weekend. Ron Corson, will will there be any decent El Nino this winter? Actually, Ron, we talked about this on yesterday's video. We did a whole thing about uh, the fact that the El Nino appears to be uh, waning fairly rapidly, which might be one of the reasons why we saw that little burst of development in the Gulf of Mexico with Barry. So uh, it'll be interesting to see if that if, if that's the case. And looking, judging from the water temperatures, to me, it looks like the El Nino is weakening. Um, it, it may not be around come winter time. I that that w w it remains to be seen. But please remember that, especially when it comes to winter weather, because a few people were asking me about that right off the bat. And here we are in mid July. Um, the El Nino or the La Nina or whatever we're under, that's only one factor of many that you have to look at with regards to um, what kind of winter you're going to wind up with. Uh, I think the the fact that the El Nino is trending weaker is the reason why the activity on the Pacific in the East Pacific side has been uh, rather sub quite subdued compared to recent years, and uh, it, it, it and we'll know that 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 the El Nino is the reason if the Atlantic suddenly starts to really get going as we uh, headed to the end of this month and the very beginning of the month of uh, August. Alfred Phillips enjoying the summer up in uh, Alaska and Wainwright, Alaska. You still getting those temperatures in the 60s and 70s up there, Alfred? Uh, Grand Lake uh, in Grove, Oklahoma, returning to normal with that light brush from Barry, says Erica Baker, and that's good to hear. Nitrovert is on. You haven't been here in a while. Uh, James Nascar, William Hoover with the burned lawn. My lawn is just as burned as yours. I have the same issue that you do with the uh, sprinklers getting blocked by bushes. Uh, Chris Alley, nice to see you on board. Bob Hurley, same uh, by you. Do you think there'll be a solid tornado threat for you in southeast Minnesota tomorrow? Everyone is fussed about it right now. I had to say, I mean, uh, SPC's got your area at risk for tomorrow. Uh, I didn't read their discussions, and I honestly, I didn't really give it a, a close-up look as far as what's going on 
uh, with regards to the Northern Plains, um, you know, there's usually a tendency for some rotation in the, the storms this time of year, so it wouldn't be be a huge shocker. But you'll notice, by the way, you're not seeing as many tornado warnings, uh, tornado watches out now. Uh, you're seeing mostly severe thunderstorm watches. Uh, is the area, uh, Johnny Quest, that area of clouds in the southern Gulf of Mexico, is that an, an invest area? Not that I saw, um, but let's, um, let me just take a quick look here see what's going on as that loads uh, by the way if you go on tropical tidbits and I, I mentioned it before so I'll mention it again uh, and you hit uh, on his page where he says current storms you get everything that's going on around the world uh, and let's see um, there's an invest in the East Pacific that's at 11 north 92.6 west so that's way south and way east. Um, 90 in the west Pacific. 99W in the west. No, there's no invest. That at least he doesn't have any. Um, and I don't, I don't think there's anything um, with regards to uh, um, the Gulf. There really isn't much there. I'm looking at the satellite, Johnny. There's a little bit of activity uh, that, that's moving through uh, the northwest Caribbean. Looks like a little tropical wave there. But there really isn't too much happening with respect to what I could see uh, on the satellite uh, in um, in the in the Gulf. But so the answer is no; it's not an invest area. Um, Shelly Man Studios, boy, you know you've been you've swung the uh, the uh, the lever from one extreme uh, out there with the kind of May and June that you've had. Uh, I hope you're having a better summer. I haven't really looked at what the weather's been going on in Colorado. At least you're getting some thunderstorms, which is more of a summertime phenomena, and not not a wintertime one, obviously. Uh, but uh, your weather's been crazy out there uh, for much of the first part of this year. Uh, Steve Lapointe, uh, underground problem. Oh, it's about the uh, electrical outage that occurred on Saturday in New York City. Uh, it was only from Fifth Avenue westward and 34th Street to 72nd Street. Yeah, it was it was confined. Uh, to uh, that particular area, there'll probably be some stresses to the system on. So, you know, coming on a Saturday, it's 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 perhaps uh, a bit less stressful uh, on on the electrical grid. It'll be a test at least uh, to see uh, what what happens. Uh, it, it would be, I'm sure, it would be a much bigger stress uh, if it were to uh, happen during a weekday when everybody uh, is uh, at work. Uh, 60s at night for Long Island next week. Well, after that front goes by, I did notice on the earlier model runs that the dew points, uh, at least the dew points, certainly dropped down into the 50s for several days. So let's see if it, if it did that today. Let's hope. Because I can't bear getting 70 dew points on until further notice. And actually, there's actually a little bit, this is kind of interesting because you know, there's this weak front that 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 tries to move through here Saturday night into Sunday. Uh, there actually drops the dew points Sunday afternoon into the 50s and low 60s across northern New Jersey and Long Island. So there's actually a little bit of a dry push here uh, for Sunday, if it's to be believed. And then the main front. See, now this is a change from earlier on the GFS. We'll have to see if this holds. The main front comes through on Monday. And, uh, you know, the earlier runs were showing 70 dew points on Monday before the front goes by, but the new 18Z run already has drier air coming in uh, by Monday afternoon, and it has dew points in the 40s uh, by uh, late Monday night, uh, Tuesday morning. Oh, my God, Tuesday afternoon, dew points in the 40s down through Pennsylvania, uh, 50s dew points down to the North Carolina-Virginia line. We can, <coughs> we can only hope and pray that that's the case. And Wednesday, still pretty reasonable, at least to start the day. And still reasonable dew points going into Thursday before they start to come up uh, in a big way later next week. I'm just making sure I'm checking the dates and make sure I'm looking at the right stuff. But yeah, uh, you know, let the, uh, it'll be interesting to see if the, uh, if the next couple of runs of the GFS try to bring down the dew points a bit faster. Because if that's the case, it might still be hot Sunday and, it, and on Monday. Uh, but at least it will be uh, a bit more reasonable uh, in terms of the humidity because Saturday is going to be god-awful with the uh, dew points up uh, into uh, the middle 70s 
and temperatures well up into the 90s and, I, and to near 100. I also would not be surprised, by the way, if there's any kind of disturbance in the upper atmosphere rolling through that we're going to wind up seeing maybe some thunderstorms develop late in the day Saturday in a few spots. So if it plays out, yeah, uh, maybe we could see 60s uh, at night uh, on Long Island, which would be nice. Uh, super late freeze up too up in northern Alaska. You're getting a, a freeze up there after all that nice warm weather. Of course, now you're past your summer peak, <laughs> I guess, uh, because uh, you're going to start to see, uh, uh, you're, you're going to soon be able to see the first specks of a sunset uh, coming up. Space weather affecting our planet Earth with CME solar flares causing massive heat wave scorches across the planet, in your opinion. Um, I, you know, I got, I've got to run that by Mr. Rayo uh, because he's, uh, he's into the astronomy stuff. And we'll see what he has to say about that. Uh, oh, my God. Anne Ames, deer flies. Oh, just It makes me think of when, I, when I'm down on the south shore of Long Island uh, with a northwest wind, like there might be on Saturday, horse flies. Okay, so if you are on the beach on Saturday, just bear that in mind. The horse flies love to come out when there's that northwest wind. It's a hot wind. And uh, you're better off with the south wind because it keeps those darn things uh, away. David Schwartz, I wonder if even going to the beach on Saturday would provide any relief. With the wind direction coming more west or northwest, you're going to literally have to stand right on the shoreline in order to feel the sea breeze. Uh, and it's going to be pretty hot on the beaches. It'll probably be up into the 90s even along the Jersey Shore and along the uh, Long Island South Shore. The North Shore might, not, might be a better idea. Especially if there's a northwest wind, at least at the North Shore, you probably wouldn't have to deal with the horse fly problem as much. Fingers crossed on, uh, on that. I may end up on the prickly heat hall of shame this weekend if we have three days close to 100, says Charlie Baker. Yeah, um, I know what you're trying to describe. <laughs> uh, let's see, is Bob Brown on? Is Robert Brown on tonight? I s just rolling back here. Um, I guess I missed him. Uh, Mirtha Gunter is on, uh, or was on. Um, Mike Talley, glad I'll be in uh, OC Maryland next week on vacation. Well, if that push of dry air is for real, you may very well uh, wind up uh, enjoying it. Joe Gaffney on, nice to see you on board. Uh, haven't seen you on, on the uh, live streams in a while. And I know a number of you might be watching from my uh, weather app, which is a, uh, a very good thing. All right, folks, coming up on 746 Eastern Time. So let's, uh, let's call it a day at this point. Uh, for those of you who, um, who, uh, who, who would like, uh, I uh, would, uh, if, if you want to uh, support what I'm doing uh, on my channel and with everything else that I've got going on. Oh, Julianne Steele, thank you so much for hitting Super Chat. I really appreciate it. Same too, again, for, to you, uh, Steve LaPointe. You can uh, do it. <coughs> if you shop on Amazon, and of course with Amazon Prime going on, <coughs> if you use my uh, Amazon link, we're an affiliate, uh, we are a participant in the Amazon Services LLC Associates program, which is an affiliate advertising program designed to provide a means for us to earn fees by linking to Amazon.com and its affiliated sites. So if you shop on Amazon using my link, you get your stuff. Amazon throws me a couple of cigars and a few first fishing lures on them, doesn't cost you anything. And uh, it's an easy way to support what I'm doing uh, by uh, shopping on Amazon if you happen to be shopping there anyway. So the link is up there. And it's also it's on the chat board and it's on the descriptor uh, to this live stream or um, descriptor to this video. Ron Corson, I'm glad you're learning a lot. That's a really good thing. Uh, you know, I, 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 uh, I'm glad folks get a lot out of it. I'm trying, you know, I try to put a, 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 a spin on weather uh, where... You know, we get more technical. We certainly have the time to get more technical on these longer live streams. Uh, and, uh, you know, I try to, 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 to at least give you the vision when you look at the maps in, in motion and in, in, in looking at the weather models to give you an idea of how the atmosphere works. And I also, uh, for those of you, you know, if you've been here with me long enough, you know, I have a very calm, even-handed approach about things that I don't go off the deep end. Uh, when it comes to uh, uh, weather stuff, I certainly don't get involved in weather hysterics uh, that you see going on in in various places. It's it's uh, it's a very frustrating thing for me because 
yeah, it. it um, it just seems like you know everything has to everything winds up being driven to its natural Armageddon conclusion, and that's just not the case. And then you've got people that take that that create that hysteria in order to wrap up some sort of uh, agenda around it. And I really object to that. Okay, uh, this is a you know I do weather here. We don't do you know we don't do uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, all the other nonsense that. Uh, I, I occasionally see in and around the uh, internet, be it political or be it, um, you know, the geoengineering stuff and, and, and all the rest of it. If that's what you're into, you, there are places that you can go. You're not going <clears> to, <throat> you're definitely not going to find it here. Eric, I'm glad you're, you know, you've been uh, posting from time to time your opinions about what you think is going to happen weather-wise. And, you know, you, you've, been, you've been pretty spot on with your observations. So keep it up, Okay. Don't uh, don't stop. Keep it up. You're doing a good job. Um, <clears throat> Mark G. My rant yesterday. You appreciate it uh, with uh, yesterday's conversation. You make sense out of everything. You know, and I try. You know, and, and if you have a question, uh, please don't hesitate to ask me. If you don't, if you can't get it onto the live stream, you can always put it in the comment section afterward. And if you can't get it there, you can always message me on Facebook. Uh, and uh, if you're on Patreon, uh, you certainly can message me there for my Patre those of you on my uh, Patreon weather platform, uh, which is uh, my subscription platform. And that's just two bucks a month, by the way. Uh, shameless self-promotion on my part, I know. Uh, but it wound up being a, a, a pretty uh, natural lead-in. So for a number of the folks on here are on my Patreon platform, but in case you're not and you're interested, uh, we, you know, we do weather all day long, and you get your... You know, extra video too, uh, and um, uh, just for Patreon members. And when we get into the storms and in the winter months, especially, there's a lot more stuff that you guys will see on there that you won't see uh, everywhere else. Have you heard about YouTube Live is getting more like Patreon? Well, um, no, I haven't actually. Um, I, 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 uh, I got to look into this, uh, but. I'm kind of happy with the way I've got things with the Patreon platform outside of the hands of Google and outside of the hands of um, Facebook. It works quite well. Okay, and one more self-promotion is my uh, weather app. For those of you who uh, don't have it, that is absolutely free. And if I can uh, get a link up here for you, if this uh, computer would just allow me. Uh, here we go. Let's see if uh, let's see if we can do this. But if you haven't done it already, uh, you can download my uh, free weather app for all mobile devices. Thank you, uh, Shelly man. Um, the the uh, you can watch the live streams right from the app. Uh, if you miss the live streams or if you miss the morning live morning uh, video, which is weather in five, you get your weather five days in five minutes. Uh, you uh, you can watch it from right uh, off the app, along with uh, reading all the other stuff that I have and your local forecast. The new update is, you know, we're basically sitting here waiting for Google and Apple to uh, to approve it. Uh, it'll make things a lot easier. It'll go straight <clears throat> straight to your personal location. You won't have to put it in uh, every single time you open up the app. And there'll be a few other additions along the way. And by the way, when we get to the winter months. I've got my snow codes all ready to go, so you'll have all the snowfall maps from Georgia all the way up to Maine, and I'll probably put a few others in there as well uh, as uh, when, when it comes time. All right, folks, thanks for being here tonight. I haven't done a 52-minute live stream in a long, long time. Uh, it has been quite a while, so thanks for being here. And uh, Trevor, uh, go back and look at yesterday's video because we talked about the, uh, the impacts of the weakening El Nino with regards to the hurricane season. But I agree that if we wind up, if that El Nino continues to disappear, you're going to see the Atlantic uh, activity uh, definitely uh, rev up uh, to, uh, to some degree at least, at least bring up at least a normal season, if not a, uh, an above normal season. All right, folks, have a great evening, and uh, we will, uh, we'll see you tomorrow.